Hi Anna. Hi. Welcome to Actors Making and I really appreciate you coming to have a chat today. Thank you for having me Diana. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, so, as you know, um, keen to, to learn about your journey and your acting career. I think I was doing a little bit, bit of research earlier and looking at your, um, your website and actress, model, did you do voice, did I see voice over yes. Oh, Christ. Yes. Yes. So talented. Well, thank you. <laughs> so, I, I, I keen to hear a little bit about your journey. How long have you been kind of in this creative world? World. Um, I've kind of always wanted to be an actor okay. since I was younger. I just remember saying to someone at school, I want to be an actor, but never really thought anything of it. Um, and then, you know, going through school, I did drama in year six. Okay. Um, and then during high school, I was like, I don't want to do drama. And dad's like, you want to be an actor, why not? <laughs> I still want to do it. And so I didn't do drama throughout high school. And then um, through, I, so I finished school and then I had a gap year. And then I was like, I'm just going to go for acting. And then, so that was in 2015. Okay. So since 2015, I've been kind of just going for it. Yeah, and, nice. Yeah, it's training and... That's kind of where I started, yeah, probably sure. kind of doing it. So, yeah. I mean, if you started kind of doing drama in primary school mm. and you knew from an early age that you wanted to be an actor, what was it about acting that made you say, oh, yeah. that's what I want to do? I don't, like, when I was younger, I don't know, it was just like, it was just a feeling that I had. I guess because my mum was a very creative person, maybe it was kind of like passed down right. through her to me in like my genetics or my soul or whatever, you know? <laughs> um, but like, look, like speaking from now, it's more so when I'm sitting in the cinema watching a film or a really well-made TV show, and I feel all the feels. You know, I'm like, oh wow, like I just I feel emotional. I feel really proud of myself, or I feel inspired, or whatever it is. And then I finish the movie. I'm like, that's why I act because I want people to feel what I'm feeling right now. Yeah. And that's kind of that's the basis of it, really. Yeah, I can relate to that. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, cool. So, and really pushing hard since 2015. Yeah. So what does, I guess what does pushing hard look like for you? But I mean, well, we're in 2021 now, so there's a good six years of mm. you kind of really hurtling towards your, your dream of acting. Yes. Um, what, what did you do, when you started in 2015, what was your, did you have a plan of what you wanted to do or a goal of what you wanted to achieve? Um, I didn't. I think in 2015, I just wanted to really, because I was with an agent before that, but okay. I didn't, I was just there for extras. My like, extras work would be fun. Um, and I hadn't done anything and I didn't get anything because it just didn't work out. Sure. Um, and then 2015, I was like, okay, cool. Let's start training. We, if we want to do something, I had nothing on my CV at that stage, like yep. zilch. No wonder I wasn't getting anything because I had like some headshots and that was it. Um, and I guess I just kind of, what was the question? <laughs> Did you have a, a plan or a oh, goal? Oh, plan. Plus? Sorry. Um, <laughs> not really. Okay. Um, I kind of just knew that I wanted to just start training and just putting myself out there and kind of like just getting stuff. So I applied for lots of short films, like mm -hmm. Star Now. Um, and I didn't kind of, I was just like, I just want to start training. Really. Yeah, sure. I'm just getting into the industry because I'm like, it's time now, I've got time, I've finished school, because when I was in school I just wanted to focus on that, yep. you know, do well in that, um, that was important for me. Were um, your parents supportive of your yes. dream? Yes, they were, they were like, if you're happy, I'm happy, we're happy, okay. but there's, there was also, like, more so mum actually, maybe because she was a creative, like, she was always a creative, but she kind of she did teaching stuff like that so she kind of maybe let it go a little bit right and maybe she was always worried about me not making enough money not making it and one an uncle in law like a second uncle or something like that like her her cousin no a second one of my second cousins i think <laughs> i don't know a cousin someone, someone, in the family. someone in the family um was an actor as well and he passed away a few years ago and like one time i remember they mum bought him and his wife over she actually wrote Home and away neighbors and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. Your mum did? No, my mum, oh, yeah. his, okay. his wife, yeah. my mum's cousin's wife. And they sat me down and I remember pretty much them telling me how hard it is. And I was like, but there was still something in me that was like, no, I'm still doing it. Like, you can't stop me. Yeah. But she's like, no, if you want to do it, I'll support you. That's fine. But I think it's just the worry of money and not wanting me to be like left out and yeah. 
not looked after. It's an expensive old game trying to make it as an actor. Mm, lots of investment. A lot of investment for not a lot of payoff for, mm. for a while. Yes. Um, but you know, it's all worth you've it. got a lot of it. It's really interesting actually. Um, my, I've got obviously a full-time career to, to pay for my mm. acting dream. Mm. But my boss asked me an interesting question last week, which was, at what point do you have the realisation that your acting is just a hobby? <sighs> and and I, look, she's a beautiful person. She did, She definitely did not mean it yeah, in yeah, any yeah. kind of negative way, but it was like, so when do you when do you kind of reach a point where it, where it's like this is just a hobby? It's not it's not a career. Yeah, so that grinds my gears. I don't like yeah, that. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, I. But I understand. What I understand too. As as an outsider looking in, yeah, and someone that's not kind of in the game, because um, sure. it is a game, uh, I can kind of see mm. how that is, and that I think is what is really kind of sad about. Sad's the wrong word, but. Mm. Frustrating about this industry of, mm. you know, you've got to do a bunch of other things and, and work hard yeah. to pay the rent. Yeah, yeah, it's so different to, like, every other job, I guess. It's like, cool, you go to work, you know, you go to uni, you get a job. I mean, not everyone gets a job after uni, <laughs> so no. there's that too. Um, but, yeah, it's like you, most actors... No, let's say, like, what, 99.95% of actors, we're, we've all got our other things going on that's not acting yeah. until we kind of get to that stage where it's just our regular thing. Sure. Um, but what, I think, what are the things that you've got going on that are not acting to, to afford you the acting? Well, I started, I always worked in hospitality. Okay. Um, like my first job was a fish and chip shop before. Same. Yes, really? Not during, not when I was trying to act, but my very first yeah, job was well, fish and chips. Uh, before I was acting too. <laughs> <laughs> Takes me back. Um, but I was, I've kind of always been in hospitality, like just cafe work up mm. until I moved to Sydney from the Gold Coast and then I think it was two years. I didn't realise you were a Queenslander as well. Well, I was born in Sydney. Oh, okay. But then I grew up in northern New South Wales, okay. Gold Coast. Um, so I've been in Sydney nearly three years now. Um, and then I moved to Sydney and I worked in two cafes and I was like, no, I want to leave hospitality. Like, okay. Like, I can I do it for so long? And I did promo work for a good year, year and a half. Which is fun, like I met some really cool people, actually met my housemate, kind of through that maybe. Okay. We met through an audition, but anyway. Um, and then I started doing fit modelling, which is fitting for brands. Okay. Um, that, it's not fit, everyone think fitness modelling, no. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, no. And I've ever seen fit modelling on like, I think, I think, you know. I'm obsessed with watching like the reality TV shows about modeling and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, I love them too. Yeah. Uh, and I remember seeing like this guy, he's like, yeah, I'm a bit model, blah, blah, blah. It was like this ridiculously ripped guy just going in and trying on like Calvin Klein underwear. Yeah, I'm like, right. hello, <laughs> bit <Hi>. model. <laughs> <laughs> um, so because it's good, it's good pay. Um, it's for like when a brand or a, a brand, they, um, have a new range or a new clothing item and they need it to be fitted like alterations, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, fits how it moves kind of thing. Yeah, cool. And then I got an agent for that nearly maybe two years ago. And then that was my regular work up until before COVID. Right. And then that kind of stopped because everything was made overseas. And then I was like, I need some more work. And then I got a job in a health food store. So I work okay. two days a week at the moment. And I had very strict boundaries around that. I was like, if I'm working again in hospitality, is just going to be in a health food store. Um, so I put three resumes out and I got this one. I was like, yeah, I know that I'll get it because I've done so much work in that world. Um, and I kind of, that's what I'm at at the moment. And now that COVID's kind of chilling out a little bit now, <laughs> things are picking up again. Yeah, nice. Um, so that's kind of what's happening. So that's what you're modeling a little bit? Or? Yeah, so I, ha I haven't got, I've had a, I had a casting the other week, last week. Um, and I just signed with another agent as well. So I've got two people agents now. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's like twice the opportunity. She's popular. Um, <laughs> a girl in demand. Yeah. Um, so that's great. I'm just like bringing in more of that like two or three times a week. Okay, cool. Can, yeah. All right. Yeah. So sounds like a decent way to make money, I guess. Yes. Well, yeah. Like just it. Like it sounds like a decent way to make money. I mean, mm. I've done hospitality. It's soul-destroying. 
Uh, but anyway, we don't need to talk about that because okay. FYI, all of you new actors, that's a little, probably a lot of what you're going to be doing. It's okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine. fine. It pays the bills. Yes. Um, it's not forever, too. You know, it's just short term. Yeah. So, going back a step, um, when you were saying about uh, you, in 2015 you started going into training, yeah. um, what's the, what sort of training have you done to I guess, get yourself all skilled up? Yeah. Um, so, I started training on the Gold Coast um, at the warehouse workshop. And I started in, I hadn't done anything before then. I did maybe one workshop with a casting director in Brisbane and I was so fresh. It was 2015. I was like, I felt like crying and I was like, I'm not good enough. <laughs> and I felt like just, I, I think I like bore my eyes out of the car right home. Anyway, that was prior. Um, so that was, I did screen acting, beginner, intermediate and advanced. Okay. So that just, we just went over script work um, and then we, you know, we film our scenes on camera. And just get feedback. Yeah. And I did that for maybe that was over the course of maybe eight months. And then I went to I started training in Brisbane um, at the acting space with Rebecca O'Sullivan, and I was there until I moved to Sydney okay. three years ago. Um, and with her, it was I did like a few different things. It was acting. Oh, I can't remember. Like just kind of acting in general, and she went over everything, all the different techniques, um, voice, accents. I, I did American accent course in twenty sixteen. Um, which I still, you know, every trying to do every day now. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm I tell really myself team. every day that I will do it every day, but I don't. Drop off a little bit, then we bring ourselves back. Yeah. Um, and then, so that was great. And then, you know, I did cast every now and then some cast and director workshops. Okay, cool. Um, then moved to Sydney, and I'm now at AMAW, so Anthony Medell's oh, yeah, workshop, cool. which I love. I actually worked with Tony, who owns it, when I was in America. I did his three-day intensive mm -hmm. in New York, and that was amazing. Um, and then I started training when I got back to Sydney after that trip. Yeah, nice. And AMAW is amazing. I just love it. And I've had a lot of growth from there. And now I'm still there. I had a break over Christmas. But now I'm with a different teacher within the same school. Yeah, cool. Just, you know, changing it up. I had the same teacher for a while, and she's amazing. But I just wanted to... Who are you with now? I'm with Ben. And I love it's great. Yeah, I really, like, I've been trying to get into Ben's class yeah. for a little while. I got, like, I was the next on the wait list. Like, yeah, I'll take you. Yeah, I think I was first on the wait list this month. And Christy emailed me saying, Danny, there is now a space available. Can you? I'm like, I've already now signed up to something else. Oh, uh, Put me down for next month. Yeah, yeah, cool. So. Um, you should be on the top then for that. Hope so. Um, but that's what I've been doing. And then I, so that's training-wise. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Which, you didn't yeah, see, weekly. you didn't have the, the desire is the wrong word, you didn't feel the need to go to like a NIDA and do a proper drama course or anything like that? Um, when I, I, maybe, how long ago was that? Before I moved to Sydney, so maybe four to five years ago, I auditioned for QUT's acting degree okay. like twice. Yeah. The second time I auditioned, the second year, I had no voice. Mm -hmm. You know how, you feel fine, but your voice is really, <laughs> Yeah. I had that today, I was a bit worried about the call the podcast actually. Um, <laughs> but I was like, cannot cancel that out again. <laughs> it's so fun. Um, and then I kind of did that twice, and I think I did it looking back because I thought I should do it. Yeah, but sure. Because I actually wanted to do it. Yeah. Because, oh, you need to go to acting school for three years, da da da, and everyone's on a different path. 100%. But, you know, and you get into acting school, and I've heard so many great things about it. And I think if you get in, then you're meant to be there. Um, but it just didn't work out twice in a row, and then I was like, no, I don't need to. Um, and then I've just, like, it's just been weekly. I've been in class pretty much weekly since 2015. Yeah, nice. Um, so, and I think that that's yeah. enough. I mean, <clears throat> there's obviously a lot that goes into acting isn't as easy as a lot of, make, a lot of people make it look. Mm -hmm. um, God knows I realise that now. Um, yes, yes. But I think... You know, there's a lot of benefit in learning how to break out scripts and oh. um, all of the technique of acting, but just doing that weekly, get in front of the camera, do the scene work, and like flex that muscle yeah. is usually, I think that's a really good, a good thing to yeah. do, and like a lot of people should. I think so. If, that, if there is anything to do, 
get in and do a weekly class that yeah. just uh, like going to the gym, right? Yeah, hundred percent. And like it gets you more confident. Like I was saying before, my first ever workshop with the casting director, I was like scared out of my brain. Yeah. And I look back and like I have had so much growth, and it's really nice to look back and be like, okay, I really wanted to act. I was like, okay, look, we're just in the start somewhere. Yeah. And now it's just comfortable. People say, oh, don't you feel like how you do it in front of the camera? I'm like. I actually really love it. It's like, it feels normal to me now. Yeah, same. And it's like anything, like go in the gym, you just got to work on those, like on the, work mm. on the muscles and you feel stronger and you feel good about yourself. Yeah. Um, mentally and physically, and it's the same thing with acting, I think. Sure. So yeah. let's um, kind of delve into that a little bit. Your first time of kind of being in front of the casting directors and you were super scared and you, I think you said before, uh, it might have been before, I can't remember if it was on, before we start recording or not, um, of that, oh, I'm not good enough, mm. blah, blah, blah. How, how would you process that and decide, it's okay, I'll keep going? Oh, yeah, good question. Um, there was just, I think it really was simply, there was just something inside me that was like, you just can't stop. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Mum drove me up there, it was pouring rain, like she was going to, she turned around, it was from Gold Coast to Brisbane, she turned around like, no, I have to go, and like she waited for me, and I think it was so long ago now, but I think it was really just a feeling that was like, you can't stop Anna. Yeah. And I think I just listened to that. Okay. Because I just, I, yeah, it was just a feeling that I didn't, I couldn't give up on it. Yeah, sure. I mean, you, you strike me, I mean, you know, I see a lot of the content that you put out on Instagram and your own podcast, etc. And you're you strike me as quite a positive person. Mm -hmm. um, do you, despite coming across as quite a positive person all the time, do you still suffer or have those self doubt conversations mm -hmm. with yourself a lot, whether it be about acting or, or anything else? Yeah. So. Not so much, if I'm being honest, anymore about acting or life. Um, towards like when I was training in Brisbane, I remember being in a class, and I was still quite, you know, you know, one or two years into acting, mm -hmm. so still quite fresh. And I was, you know, working with a uh, partner, and like their feedback was like really great, and they did really well. And I, I wasn't connected. I didn't like. I didn't feel it. And I just remember crying to my teacher, going. I just like, I was comparing myself and I was just so upset and, you know, she helped me and she spoke to me about it and I guess I was just looking back, I can say that like, I was upset about it, but I, I spoke to someone about it and I didn't let it kind of, like, I don't like this feeling and I need to not let it sure. take over me. Yeah. Um, but like these days, because I've done a lot of mindset work and like, take what you think is deep in a work and times it by a hundred. And that's what I've been doing for the last like two to three years. Sure. And that has allowed me to really be, I have my moments. Yeah. Of course. Like, oh, like, Oh, I'm not getting this or whatever. But most of the time these days, because of that inner work and the mindset, like I really reprogram my brain. Okay. Um, that's what I'm, I'm yeah. interested to learn more about that. Yeah. Thing. So, um, what is it? Do you have a specific practice that you, have to as far as mm. mind setting is yeah. concerned or um, what do you do to kind of keep yourself grounded and yeah I don't, in the moment's the wrong word but yeah how do you keep yourself what is it you do to keep yourself grounded and kind of on that yeah and it's so, gonna be okay mm. kind of mindset so to start with i i read the secret by Rhonda Byrne. okay i haven't watched uh, read it or listened to it highly recommend and that kind of just opened my mind up to be like oh Okay, our minds are very powerful. And that was kind of when I was going through a really hard time when my mum was in hospital and that kind of was like my way of coping with something really not good in life. Okay. Um, and then that was like opened my mind up to, oh, okay, cool, there's more out there. And then I read, she has a second book called The Magic. Okay. Highly recommend as well. It's a 30 day practice every single day. She gives you a little practice to do to start reprogramming your mind into like gratitude thinking. Um, you know, thinking, you know, looking around if you're working in a shopping center and just saying to yourself to like the cleaner, thank you for cleaning so we have a, a, say, a clean space or mm -hmm. 
Thank you for my free harbour. That's what that's my favourite one. <laughs> I think I remember seeing on Instagram. I do remember seeing on Instagram your manifestation of of a cast case. Oh my goodness, which I love. I'm like, um, oh my god, I have to try this. Yeah, um, so that's kind of where I started and then Actually my way of trying that was about what's good. I can back anything. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it happens in yeah. magical ways, right? <laughs> Um, and then from there, I just started doing gratitude because one of the things that Rhonda Byrne talks about is um, every single morning you write 10 things you're grateful for and why. Mm -hmm. It can be like, you know, I started off with I'm grateful for my bed sheets. Or, I'm grateful for the fan in my room to keep me cool in summer. Okay. Um, and then it, over time, it just got deeper. It's like, cool, I feel really grateful. Like looking at the beach at Bondi, it's like, I feel so, like I just feel this wave of like, oh my God, this is where I live. Yeah. And I tr try to tune into that. When I'm buying food and maybe there's a little, oh, do I need that? It's like, no, like, I'm allowed to eat. I'm grateful. Thank you for the food that I can buy. Sure. And that's kind of like, I worked on that for a few years and not so much every day. I don't sit down and write my gratitude every day, but um, I really tune into that feeling daily. Um, and I walk out like, thanks, universe, for a great day and all the amazing opportunities you're going to present to me today. I say that every single day. Um, but these days I meditate. I've actually started a um, 21 day, no, a 30 day challenge on Insight Timer. Again, another highly recommending, uh, I highly recommend that app. Okay. Um, and it's a meditation app. What's it called? Insight Timer. Insight Timer. So Insight. All right. Um, I'll put a link in the uh, bio for this. Yeah. And it's incredible. And they have this challenge that my friend got me onto. And it's every single morning, a meditation different teacher and you know I've always meditated for the last few years but um, this is kind of like holding me accountable to do it every single day yeah, nice. and I've noticed the biggest difference in the last two weeks I'm like oh my gosh this is why I meditate um, and you know some days um, when I when I hadn't been doing that it was I wake up and I just got I put in my schedule self-care every single morning because I had a week last year where I was so overwhelmed and I was just, I had to go to the gym, my mental health was just not happy. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I need to do something about this. And then I took myself, it was a Thursday and I hadn't been to the gym all week and I was like, let's go to the gym. And I felt 10 times, I was like, oh my God, yeah. this is why we go to the gym. And I learned from that and then from then I kind of started using a schedule on my phone and every single morning, I have like self-care, me time. Okay. Um, so it's either like, you know, depending on how I feel, um, at the moment it's meditation every morning, then I'll go to the gym, I'll go for a swim, or depending on what I have that day. Um, but meditation every morning at the moment, and that really just helps me feel, stay really grounded yeah. and within myself, and I can connect to myself. And if I've got a weird feeling, like I don't, I don't label things, I don't call it anxiety. Okay. I just say this, I've got a weird feeling in my stomach right now. Okay. And like, I've seen, I've seen, I have a psychotherapist and she's amazing. And we spoke about that like a year or two ago. And she's like, just like focus on it and see if there's colors or shapes and just like don't ignore it. And then she's like, it'll just pass. I put mm -hmm. your hands over your stomach. And then I do that now. It's not every, not often that I feel that, um, but it's more just acknowledging if I'm feeling off, like, okay, I feel this feeling. What am I going to do about it? Yeah. Like, acknowledge it, say hi, don't resist it. What you resist persists. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it's like, you know, gym, meditation, yeah. going for swimming in the ocean, that's like just so grounding for me. Yeah, um, cool. Nature. Um, okay. Journaling. Nice. Whatever I kind of feel. So it's like, I love talking about it because it's such a part of my life. Yeah. It's really allowed me to be in the space that I'm at now. Yeah. I, and I bet it has um, come in super handy over the last 12 months during this entire kind of pandemic situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So as I said before, I imagine the, all of this ability to ground yourself and meditate and keep yourself quite calm has been amazing during this whole COVID situation, which is, which is great. But how do you, how does that, how does all of this support you through acting? Yeah. So I guess all of this stuff helps me in the sense that I'm able to really connect to me yeah and to who i am and to i'm quite spiritual so it's like you know my soul and i'm able to connect to my higher self and to be 
um, able to ask for guidance if I need it. Um, and I guess with, and then that kind of leads into trust in the universe or God, high power, whatever, you know, <laughs> the clouds, I don't know, whatever, yeah. um, each their own. Have whatever. faith. Yes. And I feel like that helps me with acting in the sense that I just know that I'm meant to be doing this. And like a coach of mine, like a spiritual life coach, like a couple of years ago, she said, and something just clicked with me, and it was, she said, we are literally a physical manifestation, like our bodies are a physical thing, right? We're a physical manifestation of our soul's purpose. I was like, oh, wow. And that was like, holy moly, what? And it just like, my mind blew. I was like, that's, but it's like, for me, I'm like, that's so true because we're a physical manifestation. Where did we actually come from? Who knows? We're literally like floating in the middle of space. Um, and I was like, wow, okay. So we, for me, like my belief is that when we're here for a reason yep. and we wouldn't be here if we didn't have that purpose. Um, and for me that with acting, that leads into like interacting because I'm like, okay, I'm here and it's always been within me. And with that mindset, then I've opened and I've worked on the mindset. It hasn't like it's work that I've put into it. Yeah. Um, through all the things I said before, but now I'm like I open myself up to meeting people and opportunities and you know, I got a I ended up getting a job from a guy that I met on a shoot last year. I was walking across the road to my gym and he was like, We chatted for a few minutes and then he was like, Oh hey, do I have your details? I'm like, Yeah, he's like, Oh, we're casting for a job, da da da. Long story short, auditioned for it, and I got the voice of a job for it. Amazing. And we bumped into each other on the street after we'd seen each other for a few months. He lives in Bombay as well. But I was just like, and that just helps me. Like, okay, cool, I'm on the right path. I trust where I'm guided to go. And I, you know, I could have gone to the gym half an hour earlier and I would have totally missed him. But I went at the time that I went. And like, that's how I get through and that's how it helps me still enjoy life and still go for acting even though I may not be on set every single day sure. on a TV show at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yes. At the moment. At yeah. yeah. The moment. So let's talk about your acting then. Um, okay. I was checking out your IMDb. There's, there's a bit on there which is inspiring yes, and exciting you. for you. Um, some big things I saw on there like Thor and Aquaman and mm. uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. What was your experience with those massive productions? Yeah, so that was really at the start of my acting journey, um, back in like 2015, so it was like, you know, fresh off the, fresh into it. Yeah. Um, I think Pirates of the Caribbean was my first ever job on set. Okay. I just covered for a girl. Again, I ran into my agent at a cafe, a random cafe that I put my resume in for hospitality work, and she ended up being with like the extras casting director for Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay. Didn't this was up on the Gold yeah, Coast. Yeah, before I moved in here, so a, a while ago. And um, I just chatted to her like for a few minutes, didn't even know who the other lady was at that point. And she calls me, she's like, Anna, I was just with the casting director for Pirates of the Caribbean. I was like, I was like, me and my 2015 self was like, oh my God, she's like, she needs, you look like someone she needs to cover. I was like, oh my God, yep, sign me up. And that was really exciting. Hi, bye. <laughs> um, just talked about how good he's been and not being in the shot. Come up here. No? Kevin's um, trying to get in on the podcast as always. Down here. Um, um, good boy, lay down. <laughs> lay down. He's so much <laughs> right Good boy. Um, so that was really exciting. So that was just two days on set, but mm -hmm. core set, like they do the whole, when you have a costume, they go for it. Um, and I remember seeing Johnny Depp on set. I was like, oh my God, it's Johnny Depp. And then everyone's like, we've already had a fan fangirl moments. I'm like, oh my God. So that was really fun, and um, I can't remember how. How it was. exciting! Yeah, I was like, oh my gosh. Like one of your first times on set is on set with Johnny Depp. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, how amazing! Oh my God. Like I could see him <clears throat> working. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, this is amazing. And then, so Aquaman and Thor was like mm. maybe a year or two, a year later. You two, two or later. Yeah. A year or two later, and um, I did on oh, well, both of them. Maybe a couple of months work on both. Couple of um, months. Yeah. Wow. So I would, like they're obviously different projects. Yeah. Um and Thor was kind of dragged on a little bit. So I did like maybe fourteen to eighteen days over a few months. And that was really exciting. Like Was this extra work as well? Yeah. yeah. But there was one scene 
with there was Mark Ruffalo who plays the Hulk and Chris Hemsworth, obviously Thor. Um, and we're in this scene. I've never heard of this guy, this man. <laughs> who is this person? <laughs> um, and they picked me out of like hundreds of extras, and I held this banner. And the director of Thor, Tark, to keep. How do you say his name? I don't want to do it badly. Anyway, the amazing director. <laughs> I know how to say it. Yeah. He's incredible. I love him. Um, uh, he, the camera was like behind me, but then he turned me around and I was profile view to the camera and then Mark Ruffalo was like right here. And I had tape at my feet and everything. I was like, oh my gosh. And then I was holding this banner and then Mark Ruffalo comes up and like, I'm like, they're filming and I'm interacting with him, dancing with him. Like I put his glasses on and I was, like, I was like so close. Like if I had... You know, I could have been like, said one word kind of thing. And I was like, ah, but it was still really exciting. And this is like, kind of still towards like, you know, <clears throat> the start of the journey. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh my God, I, I drove home. Like, you realize that just happened, right? I was like, you just, like, that's Mark Ruffalo, the Hulk. And that was really, I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like little things like that. I'm like, okay, that happened. They chose me. Da, da, da. I'm really grateful. Um, and then the aqua room was great. The one of the big things I took out of that was I met some really good friends on that set. Yeah, nice. Um, and again, just seeing the stunt work and everything, and you know Amber Heard's character and the stunt woman like jumping through like oh jumping through doors on balconies like over the roofs and everything like that. And mm. it was really like I saw how incredible a film is, and like everyone that's behind the scenes and how much work mm. goes into it, like. A different camera like the spider camera and it shoots up across and they've got this wire and like that's one camera going up and you have to like they have to tell everyone to be really careful not to like you know there's a camera shooting up across your head because mm-hmm. it has to go up like while they're jumping over the building yeah so, um so that was really like really mm-hmm. incredible experience to have that at the start of my journey so i'm really grateful for like that's really the time. cool and i mean mm-hmm. superhero movies are insane productions yeah. right yeah. so yeah. i imagine that you would have seen some just some some spectacular stuff which is really cool yeah. so what about some of the the work that you've kind of started to hone your craft in over the last few years yeah so over the i've done you know i've auditioned for a lot of like when i was starting a lot of short films yeah. like lots um so then i you know i started booking a few short films um, which was great, and you know, doing more lead roles in those, um, mm-hmm. and they really allowed me to just work with different people, collaborate, feel more comfortable, feel more confident in front of the camera. Um, and like most recently, what have I done recently? I I did a short film called Evidence, which was fun. That was actually written for me and a friend. Oh, we wow. met the film direct, the director and the writer at a film festival in Noosa. I was like, I want to get you girls in the short film. Great. So that was a lot of fun. And we filmed that in Brisbane just before I moved to Sydney. Okay. Um, and that was great to kind of like push me out of my comfort zone a little bit, which was really fun. And that's still in editing phases at the moment. Oh, wow. That's a long yeah. edit, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little, it's a few, yeah. Two, three years ago. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's a long, it was, I feel like I'm a lot different actor than to when I Well, was yeah. Actor. I mean, yeah. every week I'm like, I'm a different actor than yeah. what I was last week. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what would, uh, what would, what do you think would be your proudest, um, or your biggest achievement, or proudest moment from an acting perspective? Yeah, so I think, um, I worked with a group of people and we, we worked on a pilot and, you know, we put, we all put so much amazing work into that and we ended up filming it and, um, it's still getting edited at the moment. But that just showed me that, you know, if you want to achieve something um, or you've written something, you can make it happen. Like, yeah. You know, that's, what I, that's one of the biggest things I learned from that. Um, I'm just really proud of the work that we did on that. Um, but I think, yeah, that's that what I've worked on so far, I think. And, yeah, I think that's just the biggest lesson that I took away from yeah. that. I think that's something that we need to probably get used to in Australia and maybe not just in Australia, but I think anybody starting out that 
it's not really it's not that easy to, you don't just all of a sudden decide that you're going to be an actor or an actress and then the jobs come and, and you're there um and i think making your own content is really important yeah yeah and you know, I, I kind of started that out saying it's important to understand that in australia because i think that there isn't there isn't that much content being made in australia by network television or big kind of production companies yeah. so independent and making your own stuff is kind of where you start to get that exposure and start to get known yeah um so are you allowed to talk about that project more or um, not no. no that's okay um but that's exciting when can can we is there an expected timeline when people will start to see that sure. stuff yeah. Cool. Right, I won't dive into it. Yeah. Um, I understand. <laughs> uh, is there, I like to kind of ask, is there like a cringiest moment in your career that you can think about, that you can kind of divulge? Like on set? Or whether, it's, whether it's like a cringy moment of acting or where you kind of walk to anger or, or what, what did I do? Yeah, there is. Let me think for a second. Um, well, more so, like, oh, cringeworthy. I don't know, there was one time on set on a short film, and, oh, we had to film night time. It was, like, up in um, the Tambourine Mountains in Queensland. Beautiful place. Yeah, stunning. And it was, like, late. It was dark, and, you know, there was leeches everywhere. And I had to think about that. And it was just more so, maybe not cringeworthy, but more so... An embarrassing kind of like I felt like I couldn't get it. Yeah. They wanted me to say it the line a certain way, and I don't know what was happening, but I just couldn't get what they were after. We got there eventually, <laughs> but it was more so just like, oh, like, come on, like I wish like you can do this, um, but I just wasn't getting it. I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember like a cringe word. Yeah, sure. I'm also like just like kind of like a okay, come on, Anna, like. Why isn't this happening? Kind of moment, okay. but yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. There's cringeworthy. I'm sure there's something cringeworthy out there. Oh, we've all got cringeworthy stuff. I'm um, sure. I'm um, sure. Um, so what you've mentioned a couple of times being in LA. Yes. Is is that your goal to move to the US and pursue acting there? Yes. So I've been to LA twice and. Obviously, it's very different at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, when I was there, I just had this feeling of, like, this is where I'm meant to be. Okay. Um, because I think over there, I love that it's the norm to be a creative or an actor. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what do you do? Oh, an actor, cool. And you get in an Uber drive. And you get in an Uber, and the driver knows someone in the industry. It's like, yeah, cool. Like, I was like, well, if he ever needs an Australian actress, an Australian <laughs> actress. like, yeah, I was going to ask him. He gives me his card and he's going to go talk to this producer of like a big film set. I built one of the big film production companies. I'm like, what? That was me just getting in an Uber. That is amazing. And I, again, I was very open. Cool. What's going to happen for me today? Yeah. I'm in LA. Let's who who are we gonna meet? Yeah. Whereas in Australia, if you, I mean, anybody asks you if you're an actor, the first response is, "Will I have seen you in anything?" It's like, yes, thanks, yes. <laughs> but yeah, it's so different. It's a very different kind of. You know, you walk down the street, and I was walking down. It was, I think, it was in like Burbank or kind of Studio City. I mm -hmm. think it was up on kind of the other side. Up, I don't know. Anyway, Studio City. And I think we were, we were just walking down the street and we heard, you know, an American guy on the phone going, yeah, like, I really like this girl, but the other one's going to be better. Like, I think she's going to suit her better. And I'm talking about the casting of their film or their show just on the street. Yeah. So, oh, my God. And I think, yes, um, last year in 2021, 2020, I won the green card lottery for the state. Did you? Yeah. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah. First time flying again. That is very now, exciting. Manifestation. Uh, my friend, who's also an actress, also yes. won the Green Card Lottery really? last year, but obviously COVID has just yes. kind of so thrown it all into a delay. Delay. So, I are they? I don't really know. Allowing it to be delayed, as in like, because I, I believe my understanding of the Green Card Lottery is that if you win it, then you've got twelve months yes, to get there. So 
it's once you get your what I, what my awareness is that once you have your um, once you get approved, you have six months to be in this country to activate it. Right. So the process can take a little while before that. So I had like forms and stuff to fill out, and then from there they asked for like a few little different documents, and then you have like medical, and then you have the interview, and then from there you get approved, and then then you have six months to get over there. Um, so I mean I've done everything I can now, so it's just trusting. And I just like for me that was a massive sign. I was like, okay, I'm meant to be in the states. That's exciting. Like first year applying for it, and I was like, I read the email. I was like, what? I was like, I sent it to like five people. I'm like, can you please read this and make sure I, you have been randomly selected? I'm like, what? That what is, is so exciting. Yeah. So I'm like, oh my god. And like the other, the other day, I was like, don't forget how much LA does me to you, even though the world's been crazy at the moment. Yeah. And, and it is crazy. And, um, yeah. Do you have a little bit of a, do you have an idea of when you'd like to get over there then? Um, I'm in no rush. Um, I'm kind of just, last year I was like, end of this year, I'm like, end of 2021. But again, who knows for yeah. the world. Well, vaccinations have started to be rolled out, mm-hmm. so I, I think it will be yeah, possible soon. To, yeah, I mean, um, I love, I'm very happy where I am at the moment with what I'm doing and everything. Um, so I'm just trusting that I'll be over there at the right time. Yeah. Um, so I'm not like, I was a little bit stressed, like, oh, like, I haven't heard anything. I'm like, I mean, you can't do anything more. Just yeah. chill, trust, do your thing right now. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you. That's very exciting. Yeah. I, I wouldn't, I would like to go there myself, but I think England is an easier option for me because I already have a passport. So oh, it's easy. Super, super easy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is cool. Um, do you have anything kind of acting wise in the pipeline at the moment to sink your teeth into? Yeah, so I'm actually working on. I've got two. I've written a short film. Oh, which, great. yes, I really am really excited about that. I'm actually going to be. I'm just going to work with someone on that um, to help me kind of write it and everything, kind of just get it going. And then I'm going to write another one. Um, when. I want to get one. I want my first draft done this week because I've been putting it off for a very long time, okay. the last few months. Um, so that's what I'm working on. I'm writing two short films and just getting into writing more, um, and again producing my own own content. Yeah. Um, just to kind of you know we create a reality. So if I can create some content for myself and for other people, obviously as yeah. well, and other creatives. It's not, I mean, having a look at your having a look at your link tree link from Instagram and I mean you're doing a lot you're you're stretching yourself pretty thin yes. which is yes. admirable um writing a poetry book got yeah. your YouTube channel focused on health and yeah stuff health, which, life. health yeah. and life which is exciting um I can't remember the other things that I looked at now, um, but it seems like you're doing a lot and putting a lot out there into the world, which is yeah, which is exciting. Yeah, I think like I had a realization last year. Um, I had an agent, and she let me go due to you know her own personal reasons and everything, which I appreciated. She was very open about it, um, and like it wasn't she, you know, it wasn't to do with me. So I was like, okay, like you know the wasn't me you're okay yeah um and from that i learned that i was defining myself as an actor not as anna and that was a massive realization and from then um i realized okay acting is still my number one thing but i'm allowed i'm able to do other things that fuel my soul creatively 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 (laughs) (laughs) we got there um so like you know podcast youtube writing um even just, you know, mentoring people, helping people through, you know, acting and getting to where they want to go. Yeah. A little bit of hair. Um, has, you know, just allows me to be me. Yeah. Uh, and that's, I guess, why I do so many things because I love it all. Yeah. And just making sure, you know, taking time. That's why self-care is so important for me because I'm, I've got so much stuff on the go. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm like, cool, have my own time. I don't burn myself out. Because I burn myself out end of 2019. I'm like, I just can't do that. But yeah, I love it all. It just allows me, it feels, makes me feel so good. It's like, cool, like I've got voiceover this week or I've got like, I'll be recording this or awesome, I've got my YouTube or I'll be meeting someone for coffee or whatever. And it just allows me to feel really free. And yeah. I have like lots of opportunities, not just, 
oh my god, I'm focused on acting. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Yeah, sure. That's what I was for so long. Like, I had to get it. Like, when I signed with this agent, I was like, I'm going to get a role straight away. I'm going to get an audition straight away. Expectation, expectation, yeah. expectation. Got nothing. Mm. And I was like, mm. and then, you know, I was still auditioning like before that, during that, like my own stuff and like people reaching out to me, which I'm really grateful for. Um, again, just being open to coming from anywhere. Um, but I learned a massive lesson from that, and that's yeah, why I do all that stuff. It's very Snoring, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was going to ask something, but then Kevin's snoring distracted me. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> um, so you you're working two days a week yes. in your job, so you've got five days to yeah. kind of fuel your creativity, which is yeah. which is good. Um, I'll ask one more question. Um, what does, maybe two questions. Okay. What's your big, hairy, audacious goal? Oh. Just to be, oh, hmm. It really goes back to inspiring, like doing being an actor and having the reach to influence people and inspire people to then go out and do what they want to be doing mm -hmm. and in whatever way that is. If that happens to be a voiceover that someone hears in a commercial or, well, I do want it like feature films, like a lead in feature films or really well produced and written TV mm -hmm. is like, that's where I'm going. And from that, inspiring people to be like, okay, like I've heard Anna's story she's like i'm like you know guys if i can do this anyone can do it because you know you put the work in yeah and that's kind of like my goal to you know be just you know being a lead in a film being in leads in films and tv that's really like a beautiful story yeah that reaches millions of people to then inspire them to do what they want to do because we have this one life and yeah of course i'm very passionate about that um well, you may have answered my, my next question with that response, actually, which, it, which really is, what does making it look like for you? Yeah, so, yeah, pretty much goes into that. It's like feeling really full within myself and feeling my soul um, with just pure joy for life. And that comes through acting and um, then making it, I guess, means for me seeing other people even if it's a message saying, hey, oh my God, like I watched this and I went and started doing training or whatever it is, you know, it's getting, helping people realize their potential and realizing that they can do whatever their soul is telling them to do. Because we, again, going back to physical manifestation of our soul's purpose, we wouldn't be here yeah. if we weren't meant to be here. Yeah. And seeing people go for what they want to be doing because together, we help each other rise and like, you know, if we're all like supporting each other, then we can all do really well and just be yeah. happy. And that's making it for me is seeing other people, you know, being happy within myself and just content and grounded within what I'm doing and then inspiring people. I love that. To do what well, they it sounds like you are well on the right track to, to be achieving those goals and inspiring other people. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for um, having a chat with me. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's been great. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. Can I give a little a little shout out? Of course you can. Me? I'm running. Can I just give my book a shout out? Oh uh, yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Of course. Like, of course. I was going to put all of it in the notes oh, anyway. Yeah. But yes, one hundred percent. Please. So I quickly. I'm writing a poetry book. I've written a poetry book, and it's based on its dedication to my mum. Oh. and um, it's going to be on Amazon very soon, so stay tuned. It's called For the One with Stars in Her Eyes. So oh, okay. it's all about love, loss, life, nature. Beautiful. Yeah, I just wanted to give a little shout-out. Of course, of course. The more it reaches people, then. Well, thank you very much. Well, there is a link to Anna's um, email list in the link tree, which, will, which I will include in the podcast notes. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, Anna. Thank you. <laughs>